his name. What do you want to do tonight? Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Chapter 8 On rising in the morning, be as particular in plunging into your bath of joy as you are in taking your usual bath in water. Say over to yourself, I am filled with joy. I am in an atmosphere of joy. Make your atmosphere so joyous that all who come near you will feel its buoyancy. God and the world both give to us just what we demand of them just what we claim with unwavering faith as rightfully ours. When we seek first the kingdom of God and its right living, when the I am is in the seat of dominion and draws all things to itself by the power of love and the law of attraction, then all good is ours and ours now. An unselfish service thinks not of reward. The love which prompts it is its own reward. There must be no belief in lack along any line. We must not think or talk about lack, but affirm abundant supply. This will bring to the one who faithfully follows the practice, the fullness of all he needs. Spiritual man is I am. Manifest man is I will. I am is the Jehovah God of Scripture, and I will is the Adam. It is the I am man that forms and breathes into the I will man the breath of life. When we are in the realm of the ideal, we are I am. When we are expressing ideals in thought or in act, we are I will. When the I will gets so absorbed in its realm of expression that it loses sight of the ideal and centers all its attention in the manifest, it is Adam listening to the serpent and hiding from Jehovah God. This breaks the connection between spirit and manifestation, and man loses the spiritual consciousness which is his under divine law. In this state of mind, the real source of supply is cut off, and there is a drawing upon the reserve forces of the organism, the tree of life. It is in this experience that man is described as being driven out of the Garden of Eden, or the paradise of being. Man should constantly affirm, I am, and I will manifest the perfection of the mind within me. The first part of the statement is abstract truth. The second part is concrete identification of man with this truth. We must learn the law of expression from the abstract to the concrete, from the formless to the formed. Every idea makes a structure after its own image and likeness and all such ideas and structures are grouped and associated according to their offices. Creative thought uses the will to build up individual consciousness. The Lord God, or Jehovah, of Genesis is the original, I will be that I will be. In mind, both Jehovah and Jesus mean, I am. I am is man's self-identity. I am is the center around which man's system revolves. When the I am is established in a certain understanding of its principle, it is divinely guided in its acts, and they are in harmony with divine law. Never say, I don't know. I don't understand. Claim your Christ understanding at all times and declare, I am not under any spell of human ignorance. I am one with infinite understanding. The accumulation of ignorance gathered through association with ignorant minds can be dissolved by using the word. You may know by simply holding the thought that you know. This is not egotism, but spiritual knowing. When you declare divine understanding, you sometimes meet your old line of thought and are disappointed. Right then, continue to hold to your declaration for knowing. Judge not by appearances. Do not act until you get the assurance. If you keep close to spirit by affirmation, the assurance will come. Will it come by voice? No. You will know through the faculty of intuition. Divine knowing is direct fusion of mind of God with mind of man. Sometimes we are taught by symbols, 
visions, and the like. But this is only one of the ways that divine mind has of expressing itself. When the mind deals with God ideals, it asks for no symbols, visible or invisible, but rests on pure knowing. It was in this consciousness that Jesus said, Father, I thank thee that thou heardest me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. The problem of self-control is never settled until all that man is comes into touch with the divine will and understanding. You must understand all your forces before you can establish them in harmony. This overcoming is easy if you go about it in the right way. But if you try to take dominion through will, force, and suppression, you will find it hard and will never accomplish any permanent results. Get your I am centered in God, and from that place of truth speaks true words. In this way, you will gain real spiritual mastery and raise your will consciousness from the human to the divine. The will plays the leading part in all systems of thought concentration. The simple statement, I will to be well, gathers the forces of mind and body about the central idea of wholeness, and the will holds the center just so long as the I am continues its affirmation. No one ever died until he let go his will to live, and thousands live on and on through the force of a determined will. Spiritual man is I am. Manifest man is I will. I am is the Lord God of Scripture, and I will the Adam. It is the I am man that forms and breathes into the I will man the breath of life. When we are in the realm of the ideal, we are I am. When we are expressing those ideals in thought and act, we are I will. When the I will gets so absorbed in its realm of expression that it loses sight of the ideal and centers all its attention upon the manifest, it is Adam listening to the serpent and hiding from the Lord God. This breaks the connection between spirit and manifestation, and man loses that consciousness of harmony, which is his under divine law. Then to keep up manifestation, there is a drawing upon the reserve forces of the organism, or tree of life, and the real source of supply being cut off, man is figuratively described as driven out of the Garden of Eden, or paradise of being. I am expressed through I will. It is the business of I am to know when the I will activities are ideally true. In its right relation in being, I am never possesses or owns anything. All things in the universe are its to use, but it must not claim them as personal property. The I am has its being in heaven, its home in the realm of perfect ideals. The Christ within but it has its freedom. It loves to be. To be is to enjoy. To enjoy is for the time to be that which we enjoy. When you are absorbed in the recital of an interesting story, you are lost to all else. The I am is for the moment identified with that which it enjoys. Here is the solution of a great mystery. How the I am ever came to separate itself from its sphere of wisdom. But it is wonderfully simple when you understand it. You are demonstrating the so-called fall of man every time you lose yourself in the whirl of sense pleasure. The mission of the I am is happiness. It seeks joy and bliss. They are set before it in an unstinted measure, and it revels in their intoxicating drafts, but the mastery of the higher mind should ever be maintained.